they can hear me. Can you guys hear me? We're laughing the whole. I'm just kidding. Okay. What do you want me to talk about, Scott? So, oh, the report, the general. Yeah, I think probably the general is the the biggest issue. Okay, when you guys get a block web page that says general, the category is a general on it. Have you noticed that pages have been blocked significantly more oh, the last few weeks? Oh my gosh. Okay. So this. Okay. Is here's the reason why. Um, Lately, we've been getting a lot of um, fake antivirus. I don't know if you guys seen it. Yes. You guys see the fake antivirus? Okay, that one. Um, when I talked to Lightspeed, they said that um, usually that's categorized as general or ads or unknown URLs. So I turned off all the general categories, ads categories. Can we play Scrabble game? Webpage to do it, which is maybe not legit, but we have a lot of fun with these letters and buttons. It's blocked. Even that one's blocked. Scrabble, Scrabble cheat. I use that too. So, the, <laughs> so I talked. I talked with Joe about this. I was just thinking. I mean, I'm getting pages blocked. Uh, we had um, one of our ads at well, our ad at Hillcrest had to upload uh, pictures to the state for someone, and so he used his block. So it's catching a lot of things. You think about that general category. It catches a lot of things. So I said, Joe, can we just turn it off? But as you explain what's happening with that antivirus, so you get, you're familiar with that, but there's just these things that pop up and say you need antivirus installed. And unfortunately, we've had some users click on that, which actually installs a virus onto the page. And so um, it's a legitimate threat. And so Joe's approach, and I think it's probably, I think it's the right approach, is um, just send those sites to be unblock that are legit. So those sites like Scrabble that you're using, when that comes up with block, rather than just cussing Joe and pulling out like some of us yeah. tend to do, myself included. No, so, Joe. <laughs> okay, go, so cuss Joe, that's fine. That part's okay. Then click the submit for review and Joe will add those legitimate sites in. So I think we need to go ahead and keep the general category block but allow um, the sites that are legitimate in it. And if you please pass that word out to the rest of the teachers as well and say, yeah, this is the reason why it's getting blocked. It needs to stay blocked because, again, those it's um, allowing um, viruses in. And just as an example, at home, I think my wife clicked on one of those, and I had to completely reformat, rebuild the entire computer. I couldn't get rid of that virus. So, um, so again, legitimate sites will be okay. They just have to. Joe has to know that those are ones teachers are using, and then he can unblock those sites. How long does a reasonable time to wait? Because sometimes I, I tell teachers things like that, and then when you play it, I tell them they're like, it's not worth. Well, I try. The email part's not working, so I have to check it almost every hour to see uh, who's. Yeah. And if it's urgent, you could go ahead and ask them to send Joe an email. If it's not urgent, I wouldn't do that. He'd still just get inundated. Um, but if it's an urgent thing, it's like, you know, I really need to send him an email. And if he's there and um, pulls to his computer, he can get those up blocked for you. Maybe you have Yeah. And the tough thing is, um, we we don't want to put it in the override, right? And we don't have a lot of teachers out in the override. No. So, so um, we'll just keep it. Yeah, we'll keep it the way it is. I think for now. Um, that again, that's part of this discussion. So. If we'll give it a month and see how it works, and maybe come back and tell us, you know what, it still really isn't working the way we need it to, then we'll see what we need to do on our side of things. So, I've noticed on my first time during the day where it's really slow, I forgot If my computer is slow, the next site that comes out is very well. How do they even know like, that is? And then I'm like, that's ridiculous that this is blocked, this is in Renaissance, or that's ridiculous this is blocked. I should just use it at a site. You know what, send me a work order. I'm going to have to log into oh, your computer and we have to, what I do is run a report on your username and I'll see what's being blocked.
I have to take these case by case. So, so that, that filter is a crucial um, security point for something we need to have, but it also needs to be workable um, for teachers. And so if we're hitting those issues, please feel free to shoot Joe an email, especially as the building mentor. Feel free to email Joe and let him know what issues you're hearing around the school so he can um, those on a case by case basis. So he's up the first step to do. Okay. Any other questions for Joe on filter stuff? Okay. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about, um, and I'm just going to mention it briefly here, and um, ask you to try to give some feedback on it. Um, right now, we have somewhere around five or six different computer use agreements. Um, so we have one for new staff members, we have one for old staff members, we have one for Wi-Fi, we have one for students, and I think here's actually another even version of the, the employee one. And so what I'd like to do is get to um, one form that we can use um, across the board. And I thought I had it posted here, but I'm not seeing it. So I'll post it here. Um, I'll just post it as an announcement, but if you'll just uh, give that a quick look. And the other thing is, um, if you looked at the, uh, the Wi-Fi agreement that we had and then the computer use agreement, they were almost, um, there's about a 90% correlation between them. So teachers are really agreeing to the same thing. They're just agreeing to it once for Wi-Fi and another time for computer use. So I just like to get to where we have one computer use and then we can add the Wi-Fi things to it, but really try to keep it simple. Um, a lot of the things that are on there, it's just covered by the simple fact that you've read the overall policy and agreed that policy. And so rather than um, taking a whole page to restate what's in policy, which say, I've read and agreed to these terms, uh, but then try to hit a couple of highlighted things to make sure people are aware of the, the really important points of that. So, you know, I'll post it here. If you have feedback on it, I'd love to um, catch your feedback on that. So. Okay. Um, the next one, the 21st century classroom plan, this is just a little bit of a follow-up off the stage here, um, from our last discussion. Um, again, what, um, what we're looking at for the next uh, two years is our main emphasis on our classroom technology plan. We'll be putting um, Neo2s into elementary, um, in the elementary schools, one-to-one -one employment with our elementary school students. And um, <laughs> so depending on how the professional development in that comes out of that, um, there should be still some money left over to do other projects as well. Um, but that will definitely be our first um, project. So um, as we look at that, again, just um, we'll be asking the champions from the schools, the reading champions and the math champions, the star champions about um, professional development and what they feel like would be appropriate professional development to make that a successful implementation. Um, but definitely as the building mentors in elementary schools, um, if you wouldn't mind having those conversations with teachers as well and seeing um, what they feel would be um, good professional development to make sure that happens. The proposal that we're looking at right now is a little bit different than what I talked about before. Um, and we're looking at doing um, a two-year rollout, uh, with starting with upper grades the first year and then lower grades the second year. Um, so that's a different pattern than, than I had originally envisioned with it, but that's um, been some um, pretty strong feedback from principals that they think that would be a better way uh, to roll it out. So. So at least Katie's smiling here. So, any feedback from this committee on that at all? Well, it is, I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's I'm doing it. The, the original quote I had from Renaissance is 1.2 million dollars. Um, a huge chunk of that was um, program management and professional development that I think we can do in house. And so I was able to, um, I think, cut that cost down about half of that. So it. At five hundred and fifty to six hundred thousand dollars, we have two years of funding to do it, and so it, it, you know it is what it is. They can be angry for a year, I guess, but we we have to figure out how to do it. So, so they'll have to be patient. So again, the big question mark then is middle schools. Um, we'll have a one-to-one -one devices in our high schools. Most uh, we put in our application to put those uh, to be in the first round. Um, just as an overall update on that. Two-thirds of the districts in the state so far have applied to be in that first round of laptops, um, and the deadline hasn't even closed yet. 
So the state's going to have to figure out, just like we did, on who gets them and who doesn't. Um, so we could be in that first year, um, but I think the state is looking at trying to get those out in two years instead of in, in three years like they originally proposed. So sometime in the next three years is when our high school students will have one-to-one -one device, um, our elementary students would have a one-to-one -one device, and then I just don't know middle school is a big question mark on what the appropriate device is for middle school and whether we can fund something there. So, uh, Questions or feedback on that from anybody? Okay. So the state is supposed to come in next year and overhaul the Wi-Fi in the high schools. Um, but there's another huge part of that that we'll actually be, um, I'll talk about here in just a minute. Um, because Wi-Fi is only one part of a very big puzzle on how that structure works. So no, our high schools aren't ready for the Every picture is going. Oh, everybody. So we're going down on that. Um, no, because the state doesn't know whether we're ready on that or not. So the, the state assumes that because they pipe in our IEM classrooms that we're all ready, but that's not an accurate assumption. And I'll come back and I'll talk about why on that here in a second. So, okay, so with that, Brenda, uh, Renaissance updates and the issues we've had this week, week or two. <laughs> Okay, I'm loud, but I'll still move up here. Um, I really don't have any great answers for our Renaissance problems right now. All I can tell you is we're working really hard to get some answers. Joe thought maybe we found a piece of the puzzle today, and it may speed things up a little bit. We tried. He's moved all of the IP addresses for Renaissance. And uh, we're still having issues with why it's slow, and we can't really find any rhyme or reason because it doesn't seem like the bandwidth's being really hogged at the times we're having problems. But I've also got the company, they're checking in. I asked them to check their error logs and see if they could see anything on their end as to why we all of a sudden start having this problem. From what I can remember, we did pretty good with our screening and stuff with all the elementary, and we did really good. And then when the screening window opened up for the secondary around the 17th of January is when we started having all these other really strange problems. But it's not like all of the secondary, I mean, really, we were testing a lot of the elementary kids then. So I don't think we were adding really any more users and it's just weird things that are going on. I mean, I need to get in front of the screens when I'm trying to do things that have always worked well. And um, the pages just aren't loading. And so just give us the feedback as to what's going on at your school, because all of those little pieces help. If somebody from Cloverdale calls, and then somebody from Discovery, somebody from Falls Valley, then I know there's issues because sometimes okay. it's working fine someplace and other places it's well, no, not. It's just, okay, I would say any of those kinds of weird things you're having, and I know it's, you know, you might be able to do this, but if you can get a screenshot of that, you know, all print screen, yeah, the neos, but but not on the, but you know, to get a screenshot of what's showing up on the kid's computer and send that to me, all of that's information I can send to the company and say, why is this happening? There are some things. Yes, just happened yesterday and then today, and it bumped it out, and then the bed started like being dark. Yeah. Yeah. And there and there does seem to be some peak times of the day that give us more problems than others. And um, Rick's gonna sit down with me tomorrow. I I grabbed him at the end of today, and I said, "You've just got to sit with me. And you've got to figure out network-wise what's going on." But anyway, I've got the company on it. We're all working on it. 
everybody hates me in the office. Uh, they see me coming, they know I'm going to, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to whine about something. But anyway, realize we know there's issues, but just shoot me an email. That's the best way because then I know. Like when Katie Joe calls and she says this and this, and then I email Jason and he tells me the same things happening there. And Linda comes back from Falls Valley and says, and it's it's easier me, for me to figure out what the problem is. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? So again, all that kind of ties back to um, what's going to be on my next item. But before I get to that, Jennifer uh, Kid online asked about, is the class that Mr. Curtis is doing, will that get you a classroom 1702? So let me just um, come back and talk about um, my original idea and then um, my idea 2.0. So the original idea was we would do a three-year rollout with the Neo2s, and teachers that would commit to doing a four-day institute would be the ones that got it. It's still philosophically, I like that idea. But again, principles here. Well, my original, this is idea 1.0, was a three-year rollout. So idea 2.0 is it's going to be a two-year rollout, and we'll do grades um, four through six, and then um, probably one through three. Kindergarten's still a little bit of a question mark. And so with that shift and saying we're really looking at putting NEOs into every four through six grade classroom teachers, I don't think the four-day institute is, is a rational way to approach that and so I'd like to move that shrink that down to a two-day institute that would still be worth one credit um, but that gives a lot more flexibility um, with doing that and so to answer Jennifer's question yes if you uh, take Mr. Curtis's class and that'll qualify as saying you've been through Neo2 training and you'll be ready to receive those I would still personally really want teachers to go through training before you put the classroom set in Neo2s you know, into their rooms otherwise they're going to sit there and collect dust I mean that's the reality I'd a lot rather have them somewhere where they're being used um, so without training, I just don't, I don't see how teachers are going to use them to um, their full extent. So idea 2.0, um, grades 4 through 6, all um, teachers, but we want to have a two-day institute for those teachers in August, <coughs> multiple days where they can go and take those. And then we'll have um, most likely our um, reading champions and our math champions um, still do a, an intensive four-day um, Neo2 Institute that will get them able to teach those classes and provide that support in the buildings. So that's 2.0. I think that's a good plan, but um, it could evolve to idea 3.0 before we get everything finalized. Okay. And uh, appreciate Jason teaching that class. And you started that last night. Is that what you did, or? So yesterday. So we're kind of pushing back the date. That'll start February. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Great. So um, Mr. Curtis is doing that class. And so again, as that idea gets out there that um, fourth through sixth grade teachers on Neo2s uh, next year might be a good opportunity for them to jump in and take that class. So. No. No. Um, yeah. Yeah, you should be okay. So, okay. Um, so let me, and then Jennifer asked a, um, a question about Skyping in classrooms, which is actually probably a pretty good lead in, Jennifer, to uh, what I wanted to talk about with our network for a minute. And Brenda, could you kick off the light for me so we could get a better um, view of this picture I'm going to show, please? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So here online, um, I posted um, a very rough diagram. Um, of, of our network. And I want to talk about what our network currently looks like, why we're experiencing some slowdowns, and some things we're starting to look No, that's that's how we're going to fund the Neo twos is with all that money. Neo twos. Okay, and let me zoom out just a touch. Okay, so this is again a rough diagram of our network, and so when we talk about the network, um, 
it's talking about how did I just lose that again? How our schools are connected to each other um, when it comes to um, the computers and um, so basically we have a fiber connection that hooks our schools together. It's just acting very slow. So I'll describe it and then hopefully we'll get the picture up there. But basically almost every one of our schools um, doesn't connect directly back um, to our tech center here. Um, cable One is the one that has, um, has that network that's built and we lease that network from Cable One. And so for all except two of our schools, they actually go through um, Cable One. So Cable One has a network, we lease that, it flows back to Cable One, and then from Cable One to um, here at the Tech Center. Here's a very small version of it. So you can see our schools here that are all um, linking back into Cable One. Now there are two schools that are an exception to that, are Bonneville and Rocky Mountain. And because they're so close to the district office and the Tech Center, we could build our own network across our own property and, and tie them back to here. Um, the issue, one of the issues, and we have a few that we need to address, is that um, each one of those schools connects to Cable One with a um, one gig network. Okay? So if you think of it in terms of, uh, we talked about pipes, for me it's like envisioning a freeway. Okay? So you have a lot of basically two lane roads going from our schools to one central point. And then at that central point, we've got 15 roads now coming into one place. And ideally what we would have is a freeway going from that place back to here. But we don't have a freeway. So this line here that connects Cable 1 and, and the Tech Center is still a 1 gig um, pipeline. So we've got 15 1 gig um, lines flowing into Cable 1 and all those are now competing to get into a 1 gig line back here to the district office. So you can see it's a traffic ship and, and there's no question. So that's one issue that we have. And then just, so just for um, clarity's purposes, we have Rocky Mountain and Bonneville that we actually have, is Rocky Mountain a 10 gig too? Or is it just Bonneville? Okay, so Bonneville actually has a 10 gig pipe um, straight back to here. Um, so that handles all kinds of capacity between us. But all these other schools, including Hillcrest and Sand Creek, are all fighting for the same traffic on this line. Um, from there, um, one thing we've done to try to um, address some of our network slowdown, um, and really there's two kinds of network traffic. There's, there's our, um, what's called intranet, which is all of our um, schools um, talking to our own computers and our own servers here inside of the district. And then you have the internet, which is when our schools are going out and pulling information out from the web. So to try to help with this issue, last year the state came in with the IEM like I was talking about a minute ago, and they put in a 100 megabyte pipe from the tech center out to the um, internet. And we thought that that would be sufficient to handle our network flow. But what we found, so we gave up our, um, we had a, last year we had a cable one connection. We really gave up that cable one connection and said, if, this, if they're putting in 100 and we've only had, we had 25 I think last year with cable one, we'll just switch and we'll go with 100. But that 100 hasn't been as reliable as we wanted. Part of the reason is because it's not a direct line out to the internet. We now have um, pretty much every other high school in the state is also on the same um, 100 megabyte, um, sorry, 100 megabit pipeline. So to help, we um, just last month we added in um, another connection with Cable One. And this one gives us, um, we put in two Cable One modems, although only one's active right now. Is that right, Creighton? We only have one Cable One one cable motor working right now. We still need to get the second one. Okay. So we put in two and each one of those will pull 50 megs down from the internet, but it only pushes two up. Is it two up? 50 down and two up. Is that right? Five. Okay. So 50 down from the internet and five back up, up to the internet, which isn't bad as long as we're using it to pull the internet down. We don't really tend to push a lot of stuff up to the internet. So, um, so that should help with this part. But again, all that does is help with us really connecting back to the internet. We still have all this traffic, which is the majority of our traffic to, um, that we need to address. So one thing we're doing to address that is we want to uh, negotiate with Cable One to increase this to a 10, meg, um, 10 gig pipeline. So now we'll have 15 pulling into 10, and 
it should be it should be sufficient because most of the time these schools aren't pushing um, a gig of data as it is. But that's why when we were doing all the star assessments at the same time, things started. One of the reasons why it started to slow down is everybody was now trying to push um, quite a bit of traffic through that pipe all at the same time. The other issue we have is um, for all the computers now, and really if you take this and you shrink it down inside of a school, you have the exact same um, issue. You have all these computers inside of the school that are going through net, um, through uh, routers and then into a main switch, which is like the entrance to the freeway um, to connect out um, to cable one. So right here between the school to get in this pipeline, there's a switch. And I think I talked about this before, but these switches are about eight years old. So it's almost like running on an eight-year-old computer. So if anybody has eight-year-old computers around, I have a couple at my house, um, I rarely touch them because they run slow, they can't handle the capacity, they just don't work the way that a new computer does. So we need to um, change out all of those switches at all of those schools. Um, to get an updated switch that will handle the traffic, we're looking at $4,500 per switch. So you multiply that times 15, and we're looking at about a $75,000 price tag. So we're working on it. Um, we don't have that budgeted into our items this year, and we all know what happened with our budgets this year. Um, but we're trying to get creative with um, maybe some leasing options and some things we can do so we can finance that and be able to um, get our network fixed as soon as possible. Um, but those are both fairly um, expensive um, solutions. So $75,000 to replace all the switches in the schools. And then we're in negotiations with Cable One about this um, pipeline right here. Each one of these um, network connections cost us $600 per month. Uh, well, I need to be more accurate than that. The, the federal government subsidizes those, so they're actually costing us about $200 per month. Um, but even at that, when you multiply that times 15 schools, it's $3,000 a month that we're paying um, just to maintain this connection with Cable One. And they, their initial answer was, well, if you want to increase this by 10 times, it's going to cost you 10 times as much. And we can't obviously afford $30,000 a month for that connection. Since then, we've had some further negotiations. We're hoping we can get it to a more reasonable cost um, to get that connection between them and us um, beefed up. And then the other part of it is um, we're in a three-year contract with Cable One. That contract is up at the end of the next school year. And so we'll be talking with other people and see if anybody Competition's a good thing, so we'll just see if anybody else can possibly provide that type of network to us. If you look at Idaho Falls' network, they don't have this issue at all. Um, the city of Idaho Falls built their own fiber network, and so basically all of their schools go straight back into their, um, into their main data center and then out to the Internet. That's the ideal solution uh, that we'd be looking for, but in the meantime, this is what we live with. So as, as we're looking at things like um, like Jennifer asked, can we can we do Skype in our classrooms? Right now, the answer has to be no, because if you start to Skype, that pushes a huge amount of data now out, and we just we simply can't handle it through the switches or through these pipelines that we have. So as we say no to things like that, it's not that we don't see the importance of them, it's we have to be realistic with the basically we're driving a Yugo, and people want to do Corvette things in Yugo, so we need to get our Yugo upgraded um, so we can handle that. Um, those type of demands. It's not that I don't think that they're important. I'd love it if we could be able to Skype, but until we address this issue, if we start turning on Skype, it's going to crash everything else we're going to try to do. So, so there's a quick little rundown on our Network 101. Did I do a decent job of explaining it, Lane? Anything I missed on it? Okay. So Lane said I'm good on the tech side. So what about for teachers? Does it make sense on where we're at and what issues we're having? And again, it's not that we're ignoring them. We know they're there. We've identified what the issues are. Now it's a matter of funding, like everything else. On, um, can we get the price point where we need it to be, and can we get the funds so we can address those issues? Okay. And with that, um, I think the last thing on the agenda, uh, March 9th, professional development. Um, have your principals come back and been talking about March 9th and what the plans are for March 9th at all? Okay, so elementary schools, um, it's going to be, there will be a morning session and an afternoon session, and um, one session will be um, some RTI uh, strategies, some concrete RTI strategies for teachers, 
and I can't remember who the name of the presenter is on that one, and that will be in the Hillcrest Auditorium. And then the other half will be in the Hillcrest Cafeteria, and we're going to bring in um, some trainers from Renaissance to talk about um, accelerated reader and the best practices with that, because frankly speaking, we don't use best practices with accelerated reader in our district. Um, we've got really 10 years of um, other practices that have crept in, and we really want to have a fresh look at what accelerated reader is, why I personally think every teacher should be using it, but I think most of us should be using it differently than they have been. So they'll come in and really talk about what it is and how it could really benefit students. I think it should be a good presentation from them. Based on what that product is really designed to do, yeah. Talking about really shifting, I mean, and I'm, my experience with it was really at Cloverdale, but shifting from a points view of AR to really a reading comprehension and our students reading at 90% comprehension rate at the level they should be reading. And shifting to a goal focus versus a points focus and things like that. Um, high schools will also be at Hillcrest. Now, is anybody here from, yeah, so Dale, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure on Bonneville, but I still need to make 100% sure with John. Um, but we'll be doing um, basically a um, same thing that half, a 50 50 split. Half of it will be on um, cloud computing, so things like My Big Campus and SkyDrive. And then the other half is going to be um, a person that's going to be teaching, talking about teaching literacy across the curriculum. So in all subject areas, how do we teach students reading and writing strategies in all content areas? And then middle schools, Rocky Mountain's going to the conference, and Sand Creek Linden has its own plan for Sand Creek. So that's our March 9th, but there will be quite a bit of um, technology on the March 9th professional development. And then next year, as we're looking at next year, if Again, if this committee has any suggestions on these are things we really want professional development and that our teachers need extra help or coaching with, um, then please let me know that. Um, let the committee know that and so I can start to get back to the rest of the leadership team and say our teachers um, would really like some professional development in these areas. The state's talking a lot about professional development of technology, but what that is or what it looks like or how to be funded, I don't have any ideas yet. But I think the more proactive we are, the, the more um, it'll the better it will fit what we really need instead of what the state thinks we need. So I remembered what I was going to talk about before. Elementary students are now in my big campus. And so I've been talking about that. I'm teaching a class um, on teaching with interactive tech. Um, but over the last um, two years as we've rolled that out, we've had a lot of interest from elementary schools uh, with having their students in my big campus. And, and Joe got that pulled off in the last uh, three to four weeks. And so um, they're there, and I think it could be a really fun tool for elementary students like it, like it has been for our high school and middle school students. So their login to it is, we're keeping that the same as everything else. It's their student ID number and their first name, and their first name is capitalized um, when they log in. All caps or just the first letter? Just the first letter, yep. It came right out of power school. So just like it appears in power school, it's how it will appear uh, when they log into my big campus. So, Okay. Um, any other questions or concerns for me at all? No takers? All right. Appreciate everybody. And uh, like I say, if there's ever anything that comes up between meeting dates, feel free to post those at my big campus. And we'll either respond to them or we'll put them on the agenda here to talk about. To an Elmo. Um, just to connect to the network. Yeah, that's fine. Do those have an output? What? You, you, well, you would just put it in front of the elbow like there, wouldn't you? You actually plug it into the elbow. Those have a video out on them? Hmm. Which Kindle do you have? Do you have enough? Nice. Well, iPads are designed to have video output. I didn't, I didn't think Nooks and Kindles did, but I could be totally wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, the point you need to use agree is if it's hitting the network. But until then, it's fine. They should do a Wi-Fi um, use. 
agreement. Well, yeah, I'm going to say in the elementary. Yeah. I told Is there any way on the Neo deployment of student schools and say, figure out grades that you want? You want to have to But she's a dying person. I know. She's a dying person. No, I, I definitely think they did. Like the principal option. level, you, you okay. can make that decision. So, you know what? I know we're saying four through six, but this teacher really wants it. Or I don't want them to take the class and not get a Neo for a year because that's right. what she all her crap. Right. Okay. That was, yeah. Okay, Thanks, thank you. Oliver, yeah. Oliver, your other option on that would be to take the ones you bought and give them one. Yeah. 